Hi all, let's have a look at the fascinating game 17 sent to me recently by DeepMind. So this is a set of 20 games, all very fascinating in their own right. This one has a TSEC start position. So E4, we go into the Sicilian defense, and in particular, the uh, Neidorf variation. A very sharp line, Bishop G5, F4. Yeah, this is still in the book given to both. So very, very sharp white casting queenside, queen c7, g4, b5, a3. And this is the end of the book here. So a razor sharp position, which traditionally, tra traditionally, exhaustive search uh, engines excel in this kind of position when tactics are the main factor. So how can Alpha Zero from this start position uh, navigate all the complexities? So it's very interesting uh, to, to check this out. So here, uh, the first move from Alpha Zero is actually Rook B8, so not castling, keeping the king in the center here. Uh, trying to open perhaps this, this B file. Uh, not putting a preference for pressure on e4, just trying to really the top priority is this rook, which also in this particular position, because of g4, you can see that this bishop can be dangerous sometimes on the diagonal. So it's kind of ahead of things like that and e5. So we see bishop g2 now, and yeah, alpha zero takes the opportunity to try and activate the rook, but is the idea simply to take on b4 here? After a takes, actually no. Alpha zero plays h6. Rook takes b4 has been played before. There's a high level game, even Chuck against Van Welle, Van, Van Weely. Uh, this is in Weekend Z 2010, a high level game which uh, even Chuck here played e5, and actually gains an important tempo on the rook on b4. Uh, and we have this kind of exchange sack line. Well, it's it's very very complicated, but really it is yes, hugely complicated here. But um, wipe the exchange up there. Uh, Imachuk actually won quite quickly after this. Black actually uh, resigned here. Knight B free check is harmless. The queen's actually protecting a one there, so there's no queen a one mate. F seven is a big problem. So Black had to resign there. So that was uh, a quick win in this line. So it shows how dangerous it is, even if. You know, if the ordinary recapture here, rook takes b4, can be punished like that. So h6 instead, bishop h4, and only now rook takes b4, in fact. So slightly different scenario with the bishop on h4, slightly different. We have bishop e1 being played. On e5 here, d takes. Uh, yeah, on knight c6, actually rook takes f4 here looks okay to play. So even with knight takes e7, this is actually apparently it's going to be okay for black. Black has a, an edge there, a big advantage in fact technically. Uh, and if we look at bishop e1 here, uh, well this is the game continuation. Uh, let's look at this again with um, d takes, f takes this time. This should be um, okay as well for black. So anyway, razor sharp, bishop e1, queen b6. We have bishop f2 defending the knight. And the queen drops back literally on this diagonal as if asking for e5. But it's actually pinned against the bishop here because of the interruption of the queen and bishop. So e5 isn't possible. Uh, rook hg1. Just to put that on the board, just to satisfy curiosity. Yeah, there's no compensation here for white of, of meaning. Taking on f6 is pretty harmless. So rook hg1, so that e5 again on the cards to open up the bishop to hit the queen and also hit the knight. So we have queen c7, bishop f3. Okay, with the king still in the center, knight b6. We have knight a2, rook a4, king b1 being played. On knight c3 here, this can be very dangerous actually to allow a check here because of d5 and for example e5 there's actually interesting tactical mechanics at work here after knight c4 
which you may never have seen before, took me by surprise a bit. After the takes, check for example. Uh, now here, Bishop e3, we can just take that with a big advantage. And there's a stunning idea in this position with the bishop attacked just in time. Can you see black to play if I give you five seconds here? Yeah, a truly stunning idea. Well, I thought it was pretty stunning anyway. Knight a3, celebrating the pen like this. So now if takes, then check, and then rook takes is mating, mate. So after knight a3, yeah. <laughs> if queen b5 is the best, giving up the queen, that's not good news. So very, very interesting uh, variation there. If king b1, uh, if knight c3 had been played to invite rook a1, it's pretty dangerous. So king b1, now e5, so that locks down at least the bishop against the e5 move. But uh, yeah, d5 isn't such an issue here because the knights don't seem to be oriented around d5 takes in fact takes knight b3 knight c4 h4 and now h5 this is a great way of parrying the positional kind of threat in a way of g5 uh, where white will be getting a significant edge pushing back this knight away from the center so h5 keeps the knight kind of centralized if white reacts with g5 there's knight g4 nice hook there it's only a minimal advantage for white technically so white took this at least opening up the rook to g7. Now we have bishop e6, and now rook takes g7. Now a5, so has black got enough peace coordination against the white king here? We have bishop e1 being played. Uh, just to show some of the dangers, uh, just as a token move to show some of the dangers. Uh, not a very good one. Just to see what what is black up to. Rook takes a two, a four. This position uh, should be kind of fine. Off the check, let's come and check. It should be fine for black. This kind of scenario. Uh, okay, so um, bishop e one. Now things get a bit violent. <laughs> Alpha zero <clears throat> plays. Rook takes a two. Now a4, trying to open up this bishop to the king, knight c1. Now knight a3 check. So stopping king b1 for a moment, king a1, and actually taking out c2. Now taking out e1. So for the moment, black is the exchange down. Uh, and also a pawn down, but... Uh, the exchange down perhaps is the more interesting consideration at the moment. We have a3, b3. Okay, a bit of a form pawn, <laughs> but it's actually given up immediately here. a2 check to open up the lines. King takes a2. On knight takes a2, bishop takes b3. Should be uh, okay. This should be okay for black. There's uh, The king is uh, pretty exposed. Here, this is an example black should be fine. Uh, so we have king takes a2. Now here's a real stunner because you might think, well, what, what what's the idea here? Is it queen c2 check? Uh, the thing is, off the queen c2 two check, uh, it's not so hot. White can sometimes play rook g2. Uh, I'll just I'll just put that on the board actually. Queen c2 check, and it's difficult for black. Uh, to do much actually um, actually I don't want to spoil the move there okay there's there's an interesting move played in this position I wonder if you can guess so Sicilian defense players might want to check this out or know this particular theme uh, tactically positionally if I give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play with the black pieces here and this is actually stronger than the immediate queen c2 this idea Okay, knight d5. So the knight's on praise to uh, two pieces here. What's the idea? It seems the main idea, given that queen c2 is on the cards, the main idea is about this diagonal. Uh, for example, now, if rook takes, bishop takes, and white has to play something like this, actually, because e takes is just too dangerous. Off the check, there's e4. And in fact, we've also got a loose rook on, on g7. 
So uh, say uh, bishop takes, that's no good uh, because of bishop f6 check and white is getting mated. <laughs> uh, so that's that's pretty nasty opening up the diagonal. And on queen takes, then it's still fine because check picking up this rook. So all of a sudden black has the big advantage here. So very dangerous uh, this. So white actually played uh, and also sorry let's have a quick look in this position at e takes yeah we've, we've seen e takes okay so rook takes was played bishop takes this was left here now because of the similar considerations we have king b1 and now bishop b7 so black is not the exchange down anymore it is black is two pawns down but can the bishops work together with the queen uh, here? We have the rook going back, queen d6, queen c3, king f8, knight d3, now rook g8. Yes, very interesting scenario. So after taking king c2, on knight takes e5 here, there's bishop f6. And if knight c4, bishop takes e4 is sufficient actually to get a draw here. Uh, as a line, a perpetual check line, either perpetual check or winning the bishop on e4 if white doesn't, and it's still drawn, drawish. So uh, very interesting. So king c2 was played, bishop f8, b4, queen a6. We have king b3. Bishop c6, so coordination against a4 here. That prevents any stuff on a4 for a moment. Knight c5. We have queen f1, but there's other stuff going on now. The king comes back, protecting b1. Bishop b5. King b3. So even though white is two pawns up here technically, it seems the bishop power is very dangerous. After bishop h6, king here, bishop c1. And our bishop drops back to f4. Protecting e5 now. And the bishop just plays here. Yeah, it's too dangerous for the queen to leave here because of uh, things like bishop c, things like queen c1 in particular, actually, there. Um, so we have knight b3, bishop d7, knight c5, bishop b5, knight b3, bishop d7. Bit of toying. Now check. Now bishop b5. Now the bishop goes back here check queen c3 bishop comes back yeah white can't really make too much progress with the king safety like this it seems the bishop pair compensate for being two pawns down here king's too exposed uh, we have check and again the queen goes back now knight c5 uh, just just to show some of the dangers here if knight c5 isn't played uh, for example, this is a bad move to, sh to put on the board, but just for the sake of argument, check, and then here taking well, then bishop d2, and then check. Yeah, taking the bishop is a big problem actually in its own right. So knight knight c5, bishop goes back, and yeah, some playing around here until this position that we have h6 check, and uh, stockfish is uh, kind of guaranteeing a draw it's far too dangerous to take with the king there's things like queen h5 uh, and bishop h5 on the cards here if, if this is taken uh, so we have bishop takes and this is now a draw by perpetual after check 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 yeah load and the game ended here uh, so it's a draw by perpetual there on king h8 again it's a draw by perpetual there's, there's no way of escaping checks so um, I've, I feel the fundamental point of, of this particular game I feel I haven't been told explicitly but is to make sure that Alpha Zero can handle uh, all sorts of positions even the very seemingly technical ones um, if you read uh, Kotov's think like a grandmaster or play like grandmaster. I think he said about how you align your thinking to the nature of the position 
And you would have thought that the traditional exhaustive search engines are really superior in the very, very sharp Sicilian defense positions. However, it's not so simple as that because sometimes uh, the evaluation power can really help kind of indirectly navigate uh, complexities, even if the endpoints seem to be two pawns down as this showed, you know, if, if king safety and other factors are strong, then that makes up for, you know, material loss concerns, at least uh, from when you're in the middle of a very complex, inverted commas, hairy position. If your evaluations are still strong, you know, you can at least reach decent endpoints, even if material down, that there's good compensation as this game showed. Uh, the knight d5 was pretty staggering, uh, showing how pawns are the fundamental constraint of the pieces if you read simple chess. Uh, so knight d5 was a real liberating move potentially for this bishop on e7. Bit of a shocking move putting a knight on praise to two pieces there. So quite an exciting uh, fighting draw here. Alpha Zero is showing it can play, you know, very technical positions as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this game video and analysis. Please click on the top left box uh, to become a member at chesswell.net to play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis of this and other games from the improved menu, learn from the master's YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell, all really appreciated. And there's also a new Teespring store in the description. Okay, thanks very much.